Oh, Gary Nasai Minasan, today we're gonna talk about Osama Sentai King Oja episode 10. And this episode finally introduced us to the legend King Oja. We get to see all the shoe gods all coming together and all the greater guardian deity all come together itself. So it is really, really Subarashi. And we get to see the power of legend King Oja that it is able to travel in the speed of light. Like after they travel, to every single nation they actually leave a golden trail behind and even a, sh a, a glimpse a, a after image of the legend king oja and it is really really subarashi to actually see that happening and I, I i love it okay i love the color choice i love the gold on on the king oja itself it looks really really subarashi but with that being said i felt like it is it's just a little bit of nitpick that I have. I maybe I'm I it's been a long while since I watched a Super Sentai series. But the the the, the, the Zord is really really bulky, okay? So I, I would love them to kinda like nail it down a little bit. But then again, that is just my own personal uh preference i'm not saying that the design is bad it is just my own personal preference but with that being said let us talk about the rangers in this episode itself we actually get to see all of them actually making quite a similar conclusion without consulting with one another like after they split their way go their separate way something like that we actually get to see all the kings actually say that hey let us abandon our land because we need to prioritize the human the people something like that and this is something that i really really respect about them because one thing we need to understand is that the they it, maybe one thing that they understand is that the people are the country itself they, they are putting the life of the people as the priority first before they are they're they are actually putting their own power as their priority something like that and it is up to the the subordinate of the king actually convince them to do otherwise to say like hey maybe it is you like what we, we i i really love the acting between yanma and and that Swally Swally guy I forgot his name already I really love the acting at the part I, I felt like Yanma is definitely the best actor that that is among the, the group today like in, especially in this episode his performance is really really good like the, the way he is screaming I mean maybe it's because he's able to scream that he's able to portray a lot more emotion a lot of like, more anger something like that which actually allows him to do more with his character because the rest of the character don't really have that opportunity to do so like Himeno like when he's talking when she's talking to Sebas we actually get to see that I, I really felt like the acting is a little bit lackluster something like that and I it, like even for for Dibowski maybe it is also like the the way he's the, the way the scene is constructed doesn't really allow him to portray a lot of emotion and maybe his character as well so i, I but i i would say i really love yanma in this episode and we do we have to say rita man rita is talking to mofun with covered face i think that is also really really heartwarming as well to to finally see monophonia enter the room of rita like really enter into her space and being part of Rita's life and that is something that I felt like it is a the door is a symbolism of of do not cross the boundary Monophonia never crossed the boundary he knows she knows what is happening in the war of Rita but she never actually goes into the room and and kind of like offer help but instead she make fun of her no, she doesn't really make fun of her but she find it really really entertaining to hear Rita talking to Mofun something like that and that is something that I really really love in, in this episode which is to see Monophonia actually go into the room of Rita and mimic the, the voice of Mofun to talk to Rita that is a really heartwarming and cute scene so I uh, God bless us okay like they, they have blessed us with this amazing scene but really really amazing scene stuff we actually get to see here but there is one king okay one absolute asshole king that choose to play politics up until today and that is Rakles Hasti he like he saw this as a crisis and he actually offered up hey if you surrender your your kingdom you, I'm, I'm gonna prioritize in saving you something like that so Rakles is 
playing politics even up to this tough time, and I'm not sure what to actually think about it because I I felt I really felt like Raklius is can be a, a redeemable character but based on the direction of how he is going right now i don't think he is gonna get redeemed anytime soon okay because we we need an evil rider uh a, a, a evil, evil ranger okay so we are we are not sure what his character art is gonna be is he even gonna be a king by the end of the series that is something that we are not so sure about but speaking of that like there's really nothing much to actually talk about in this episode except for the amazing fight and amazing choreography by the stunt man and stunt woman it is really really good okay like i felt like the the camera angle the cinematographer the composition and all the stuff they really did an amazing job in really showing how amazing the rangers actually are but one thing i i, I maybe i can talk about something that is on my mind after i watched the emperor of death death Nara, okay death Nara, which is the emperor of bagner right i actually realized something really really interesting and that is how he always used the tentacles to attack but we also get to see that he has two tentacles that is always glooming behind him as well so that i actually have an idea that what if this desenara is not actually his man body itself but instead that like, he has an even bigger body that is hiding under the wall something like that that we never actually get to see before and this desenara that has been popping up all over the country all over the world is actually just an avatar that he used to move around the city something like that okay so but that that is kind of like the idea that i have but with that being said the next episode we are actually gonna see the narrator finally and we're gonna apparently the narrator is the spider kumonos that we are gonna see and it is looking really really subarashi that we are finally gonna meet spider kumonos how like who is this guy and what what is gonna happen all of this we we, we we are not sure okay but he did actually mention something about he is sleeping and it's not a time to be sleeping anymore something like that so he there's a rumor saying that he is way older than the king Oja zero and that 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 could actually be true okay like maybe he knows the true identity of the bagnara and maybe from him we're gonna learn way more about the bagnara itself but that is all from me regarding all summer sentai king oja episode 10 it is a short one but I, I still appreciate it that you made it this far into the video like you made it to the end and that is something that i really really respect about you but the the word for today if you made it until the end is insect okay because the theme of all summer sentai is insect so insect is the word and i'll be seeing you guys in the next one goodbye